Hi everyone, my name is Mikdad. I'm from Kerry DC. Uh, today we have another meeting uh, with another success story uh, about how to get to uh, the civil engineering industry. We have with us Sina Mugaddam. Uh, Sina, actually I met him a few years ago when he was uh, studying. Uh, Sina started in Australia as an international student. Uh, but now he's working as a civil engineer. So thank you very much for uh, joining us, uh, Sina. Thank you, my God. Hi, everyone. Great. So Sina, uh, when we first met, you were an international student and you were looking for an internship at that time. Uh, can you tell us about that experience uh, when you were studying here? So when you first started in Australia, yeah, so uh, yeah, I came to Australia in 2011 to study my master's degree and studied a master of civil engineering, which was amazing. I love the university. I stayed there for two years. Uh, and then I graduated in 2013. Uh, it was a really good experience, you know, studying um, in Australia in a really good university here. Uh, but uh, after that, after graduation, that was the biggest challenge that uh, because I didn't have local experience. And, so you uh, had your bachelor degree from Iran and you yes, came correct. here to do your master degree. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I got my bachelor degree from Iran. Uh, I worked for one or two years in Iran as well as a civil engineer. Then I came to Australia and studied my master's degree in 2013. That's correct. Yeah. And how did you see the job market when you started applying for jobs? Oh, it was, uh, it was very competitive, uh, or maybe not really competitive, just be, uh, the, the really big challenge was that I didn't have local experience. And in Australia, it's extremely hard to get the first job, you know, as a, if you want to work as a civil engineer, because uh, I think if you look at it from the point of the employer, they really want to find somebody that has at least a bit of experience, even uh, as, as, as short as two months, three months, that uh, somebody that they can call or get a reference or at least uh, say that, okay, the guy at least work here for a while, you know the culture, uh, you know, has a bit of idea about the uh, like Australian market and all of those things. So for me, I think the biggest challenge of my life in Australia uh, was finding my first job. I mean, for me, I mean, I probably went a really difficult way. For me, it took more than a year to find my first job, which was, uh, I mean, I applied for more than 100 uh, position. Um, and I think that was, uh, I mean, the lowest part of my life in Australia that uh, I applied for so many jobs and I didn't get any response. I think uh, the main reason was that I didn't have uh, local experience which was really, really so that's challenging. before you found your internship correct yeah, exactly so at that time then i was so desperate i was i didn't really don't know i thought uh, i thought uh, this is the end i thought that i never ever can find uh, uh, i mean i love civil engineering i thought okay probably that's not gonna happen for me there's no way i can find the job because the thing is that uh, when you have more gaps from the graduation to the finding a job then it's becoming even more challenging because you have one year gap and everyone says okay what were you doing in the last one year you know uh, so at that time um then i find a carrier dc i don't know how i find the carrier dc i think i check on the a google lead or somehow then it's come up and i think that was a that really changed my life, you know. The first day I called uh, Carrier DC and uh, I just explained my situation, uh, explained about my situation and all of those things, you know. I wish I could have called Carrier DC sooner, you know. As soon as I graduated, I should have called Carrier DC to uh, get my internship, you know, and get it started. And I remember when you first talked to me at that time, that was maybe six years ago or something like that. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. And I wasn't sure because you already had some experience from Iran. So I was like, yeah. are you sure you wanted to get the work experience? Yeah. And we organized an internship for you in a small company. So like, for example, we hear a lot of people saying, okay, small companies, we want to get experience in big companies. Does this really matter when someone is looking for work experience in Australia and your own experience? Uh, 
Not at all. Uh, to be honest, I if I want to start hundred times again, I definitely start in the small company. Uh, in the big company, uh, you are part of the process. You have a very limited task to do. In the a small company, uh, because you are few people and you have a lot of things to do, because uh, you can involve, uh, you can get involved in so many different things in the company, uh, because you are only three or four people, or uh, more or less. And there are the oceans, um, there are a few people, but with the oceans of opportunity, you can get involved in different parts of the process from any things that happen in the company, you can get involved. And uh, uh, the thing is that the most important thing is, it doesn't matter if you have five people in the company or 10,000 people in the company. The, the most important thing is that the person, your manager, hawking, the person is unknowledgeable, he is to kind of guide you in the right direction. I think the people you work with, that's the most important thing. And definitely it's better to start from a small company because that's the place that you can do, uh, get more tasks and responsibility in the company. And uh, would you say that after the internship, was that sort of a good pathway for you? Did this make it easier for you to find the job oh, in Australia? For me, that's make it absolutely easy. I mean, uh, me as a person that it took me one year with uh, I couldn't find any job. I mean, absolutely nothing. Uh, when I started working in the internship, first of all, I got my confidence back. And, you know, I was working and you can update your resume and your resume instead of saying that, okay, last time you worked was overseas and a couple of years ago. Uh, when anybody look at your resume or say, oh, this person is working currently, you know, it doesn't matter if it's internship or not internship. The important thing is that, oh, this person is working in the company in Australia. So uh, it's kind of like have some idea about the culture of here. If I uh, have some references of this the company, he's already working in the industry. And, uh, you know, you really update your resume. It's, it's already there. You are... Uh, I mean, you're already working, which is great. I think after that, uh, it's it's very interesting. Before uh, my internship, when I applied for 100 jobs, maybe one or two people called me. But uh, after my internship or during my internship, when I applied for other jobs, if I applied for 10, at least five of them uh, kind of replied to me, which was really great. And I easily, after my internship, easily I find a job. So it increased the uh, the number of interviews uh, quickly. You can yeah, so, yeah, you yeah, saw yeah. A, a big difference. Oh, the huge difference from uh, as I said, out of hundred uh, jobs that I apply and I get two, let's say it's two percent, and increase to maybe fifty percent. You know, that's what, uh, that's what the, I mean. I usually find a job after that easily. Right. So, and then the after that, you found the job. And then did you stay in the same job or did you move? And was it uh, or did you stay in the same job after? Uh, no, after that. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, after a couple of years, uh, yeah, I moved to the new job in Australia. I think there is a kind of different culture compared to, I mean, some countries overseas, like in um, uh, like in back home, uh, usually people that stay in one co uh, one company for a very long time, maybe for the rest of their life. In Australia, there are so many uh, opportunities, so many jobs, and, and so many uh, opportunities. And the funny thing is that as soon as you, I mean, as I said, the, the most difficult part is getting the first job. As soon as you get your first job. Um, for second job, you really don't need even to apply. People approach you, I mean, find you on LinkedIn and ask you to come to for an interview for a new job. I mean, I get even in my current job that I love my company and I'm working here every couple of months on LinkedIn, some HR uh, human resources from other companies call me and ask me, hey, is you interested for the interview? And a lot of time I say no, because I'm still happy in this job. But uh, I think I say as a civil engineer, on average people that stay in a company, um, it's very normal to say two, three years and, uh, and move on to go to the new company to kind of, you know, expand your knowledge and, uh, you know, uh, get idea from different aspects of the company uh, industry. But as I said, yeah, first job is extremely difficult. If you get the first job, which is, uh, you, uh, Carrier, this make it super easy because um, 
you get the internship uh, through that. As soon as you get the internship and you get your first job, uh, rest is easy. People approaching you. Instead of uh, you go around, give your resume, people calling you to get a new job. Because you are in the industry, you know, basically uh, the whole industry is a very small uh, industry. Everybody know each other. So some of uh, my friends working in other companies ask me if, hey, you know, if you're interested to come and work for us, you know? Right, that's good. So it's the obstacle is the is to get into the industry once you get to the industry in australia it's easy after that very it's easy, easy yeah. to move from one job into another and progress oh, without very, very easy. yeah 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 you, you kind of become famous in the industry too because you're working there you're going to different sides uh, you know everybody in the industry after that you realize that oh actually it's a very like a big family you know a uh, small market and uh, a very small industry everybody know each other and the uh, most important thing in every company is that the legacy you put behind like uh, if people know that oh uh, we know this guy you know he's a very hard working good engineer you know you become really famous in the industry and getting uh, the next job or after that is not a challenge at all it's work uh, ethics yeah. work ethics are very important because you know i yeah. do remember i know it was a few years ago but i do remember that you've done really well in your internships you work really hard so although it was just work experience you worked really hard and if you apply those principles in every job and for every opportunity that you meet uh, you are more likely to be successful. Like you have to work hard. You have to have good work ethics. You have to be punctual. You have to show up. Hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, uh, when I got my internship, it was I did it with full passion because I really enjoyed it and mm -hmm. I was really uh, learning things too. A lot of things, you know, it was a refresher for me. I'm learning. I mean, I really, uh, you need to enjoy the everything you know you, you need to enjoy your work you need to enjoy your internship i mean uh, when i uh, did my internship i remember some people doing internship but didn't really care you know it's just mm. like teaching the parts and i find it really absolutely i mean useless uh, mm. i mean uh, when when you go to the internship just enjoy and try to um, enjoy the experience and learn as much as you can and you know add it to your resume and uh, you know you always after a while after a month or two you can go to your manager in the uh, company and even if you want to know new things you can always discuss with your manager in the uh, in your internship as well that hey you cannot work in these areas or that areas you know definitely the manager when they invite you they get you as an intern and uh, they're definitely interested in developing you. So use that opportunity, try to work with them and, you know, um, and really get advantage of that situation. Yeah, use it. It's an investment. Yeah, yeah. So it's an opportunity to really improve. And people that are passionate and they are serious about their career, they would do their best. They don't say, okay, I'll just take the box and just put something on my CV. You know, if they go try to learn what kind of software to use, they might learn new tools, they might learn about the industry standards. So, the, so try to, so what you're saying is that the interns must try to, get as much information, as much learning as possible during the internship, because it will be useful. On the first time, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic, and the work ethics, and trying to get all, uh, the to get the maximum value from the opportunity. Uh, Sina, I know you just finished work, so it's been a long yeah. day for you. So <laughs> I will ask you just one more question. Oh. What is your advice for international students that are still studying and they don't know where to start, they don't know what to do, and but they are like you a few years ago. They are looking for a way, looking for a job, and they are thinking maybe they can apply for their permanent residency in Australia and settle in the country and have a professional job. Basically the same steps that you have done you yeah, know, by, yeah. uh, by now. So what is your advice to, to these young international students? Uh, about uh, their future career or yes what do you oh, okay. how do you sum it up what do what do you think what do you advise them to do well uh, i just say that probably i don't give them the advice but i just say that if 
I wear them or if I go back to a uh, couple of years ago when I was about to finish my university and uh, just closer, when I get closer to my uh, graduation, I would have, uh, uh, first of all, I would have uh, started applying for jobs sooner. I mean, then while I was in the university, and if I personally, if I go back that time, I wish I could have contacted Carrier BC sooner so I can get started my internship much faster. It's really good if after your graduation, it's straight away you get to your internship. And that, you know, you save a bit more time, your resume is up to date and you can get to the job that you want. And uh, the other advice that I have, uh, well, I say civil engineering, but I really had no idea that in which field of engineering I can, uh, I want to go because engineering is a really, uh, you know, really open-ended uh, industry. You can be in construction, you can be in design, you can be a side engineer. And I was so, you can be in highways, dams, and all of those things. Uh, so my advice is that, uh, just uh, uh, just be open to opportunities. It doesn't really matter if you look at a structure, you go to the site, or if you are, love the site, you go to the highway or anything. Just for your internship, just be open to the opportunities. Get anything that come to your um, come to your way. Any opportunity is a fantastic opportunity. And then slowly after that, you can see if you like something or not, then slowly kind of give it the direction. So just for your internship, just go for it because it's not only the exact thing that you want to do is uh, knowing about the company, knowing about the culture of uh, Australia, again, your uh, communication skills and all of those things. Because when you started your internship, it was in design work, AutoCAD, Revit, uh, drafting. And now what are you doing at the moment? Oh, I, uh, right now it's totally different. But uh, at the moment, I work with concrete. So we're designing, uh, we uh, basically, our company is one of the biggest suppliers of uh, construction material, including concrete and aggregate. So I work as a technical manager for the concrete. So I mean, design of the mixes, concrete mixes, and those sorts of things for the major projects. So our company is one of the uh, biggest supplier of the concrete all around the world. And I do the quality control working with the concrete and those sorts of things. But any uh, job that I did in, before, they're all helping me today. So that's why I'm saying that any job that you do in any field of engineering that you go, you're working in one part of the, this uh, cycle. So uh, right now, when I work with other engineers, I can say, hey, I did a design before. I understand from your side what you mean and all of those things. So it's, um, anything that you do at the end of the day, and, uh, you gain skills that are going to help you uh, with the, the task. So the idea is right just now. to get to the foot uh, into the exactly. door, just get into the industry in any, in any opportunity, just take it. Definitely. Yes, yes. Great. Thank you very much for your time, Sina. I appreciate it. I'm very happy to hear about your success and I'm very glad that we reconnected and had this meeting. I hope to always see you becoming more and more successful. Thank you, Michael. And I really thank you for everything that you did for me during the last couple of years and helping me out to be to the place that I am today, you know. I'm very glad that we are part of your success. Thank you very much, Sina. Thank you, Mikla. Thanks a lot. See you. Bye.